Hi, thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, we're going to be, be making a thousand board feet worth of uh, pine flooring. This is uh, going to be tongue and groove for a, a customer. And uh, stick with me and I'll show you how we got here. Okay, what I did there, I took my cant, took my log and made a cant. One more cut on this and I'll be at my six and a quarter and I'll be able to pull one more uh, four quarter board off of it. That one's pretty clean. What I want to do now is uh, take these and stand them up on edge and get to where I have a, uh, I can clean the edges up, flip them over and then do my uh, six, in, six inch board get everything cleaned up at the same time. Gotta love it when they get stuck on each other. Come on. There. This jacket board might not make it. Put these into greenwood. Beekeepers might like that. Those are about three and a half inches, I think. 
yeah, three and a half. That's that's fine. They like to use these for feet on their uh, on their bottom boards for their high bodies. So that's money. And all of these are six inch. going to be good boards for flooring. Just got to get this one hooked back up. I'm going to try to pop off all those knots. Notice I didn't, I didn't adjust the height on the blade after I made that last cut. That was so that this is the same size and I can come back and get this one. I wanted to leave the height on there so that I could gauge better if I was going to be able to cut off all of the uh, all of the wane on those on those boards that I was re recutting. Now I have six inch ant and a bunch of six inch boards to go with the rest of it to make flooring with. Now I'm set up to where I can go on to bed mode here. I'll do a cleaning cut just to kind of uh, get this set up to where I am uh, inching an eighth, however many times it'll repeat going up. And then so the first board, same thickness as the last board. And it saves me a whole bunch of time because I can pretty much, I won't get all the way through, I'll stop about halfway because I don't have enough clearance. But uh, I can pretty much get this whole thing cut now. I won't have to touch it again. Just a real quick here to show you all how this works out. Um, you see my mast here. And I've got two rulers. This one is uh, my height off the bed. And this is my quarter scale. And you can see four quarter, five quarter, six quarter. Four, five, six, and eight. Each of those is like four quarter is one and one eighth inches. It's allowing for soccer. So you see here on that one, that is a, a zero point. We'll call that for now. And then that one is an inch and an eighth away. So every time I I set my uh, simple set, it'll do that automatically. I got lucky. I got it set to a four quarter line, and it is as you can see. The blade is right on the edge of the of the board, so I'm not even going to make that cut. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it an inch and an eighth. This is how the simple set works. My, this is my control panel. This lever is my forward and reverse. This lever is my up and down. This is my feed rate. And you see here it's set to manual right now, so whatever I do with the up and down lever, it'll move it for as long as I'm holding it. This is to turn the simple set on. I press that, and now it shows one and one eighth set. So now at this point, turn the saw on, and I, every time I bump the up and down, it'll drop an inch and eighth, and I can lift it up to clear my last last board. And come back to the reset the carriage, bump the lever down, and it'll drop back to an inch and an eighth below where it was the last time.
now the saw is set for my next cut. And when I turn it back on, it's right where I need it. I don't have to go back through calibrating again. So I can unload what I've just cut, fire the saw back up, finish cutting. the sawdust off because it helps the wood to dry a little bit more evenly in the kiln because what ends up happening as it's going through the drying process if I leave the sawdust then it acts like a wick and uh, keeps capturing mo moisture so it's like this, there's a cycle of where the sawdust gets dry then the, the hot air dries the sawdust and that makes room for the water inside the board to come out which gets the sawdust wet and it's kind of a feedback loop as it goes through the process and it makes a difference if I don't scrape the sawdust off if it's a little excessive then it'll add a day or two to uh, pine as it is, pine only takes about a week to dry in that kiln. Five to six, about five days for the drying cycle, and then another day for the sterilization cycle, and then the last day is just letting it cool down naturally. So, zero to done, 20 minutes. That one log yielded 15 six inch boards. And uh, 15 times 4.5, because that's how many board feet each board is worth, not counting my waist. Let's see. 67 board feet. 67 and a half out of one log so if I can get this stacked next log up on the mill then you know uh, that makes it about eighty dollars an hour that I make. Not bad. Sometimes I feel like that that sawmill is like having a money printer. Printer go burr.
usually the larger logs it takes me almost an hour smaller logs like this 30 to 45 minutes depending on how much I play with the camera how much I scratch my butt y'all know what I'm talking about there sometimes you just kind of don't get to that point where you're like you know what this isn't very fun today so you don't you're not as motivated to hustle a little bit that's usually days when I'm sore and I'm usually sore when the mill fights with me because I end up having to climb up underneath it and fix stuff I like to do this on my first couple boards because it locks the uh, stickers in place and then I can kind of just toss as I go I don't have to be careful with them get them all knocked out of alignment because it's real important to keep your sticker straight up and down and directly on top of your load points you're probably noticing how some of these are kind of curled up but I have a couple pallets with uh, with uh, concrete bricks on them and each of these pallets weigh about 1500 pounds so it squishes them flat kind of like pressing a flower in a book they get flat and they stay flat I'll show you all an example here All right, that stack right there that you're looking at is about a thousand board feet of uh, kiln dried four quarter lumber, and it's flat. Now that that stuff is a joy to work with because I barely have to put it on the jointer, if ever. Usually, it's flat enough, especially for pine, that uh, I could just run it through the planer and build with it which is kind of what I'm hoping I can do with this batch of lumber that I'm making because uh, this is all going to be flooring and I want to touch it as little as possible so if I could get this this uh, this batch of flooring to come out nice and flat like this then I'm, I'm money ahead uh, I've got a lot of saved labor show you all a little something that throws me all the time with yellow pine those look like metal. But what that is is uh, sap that found a little pocket and crystallized. I can scratch it out with my fingernail without too much effort. There, you can see it there. Kind of trippy. Now, sometimes it's like I'll see this stuff and I'm like, oh, somebody shot it with buckshot trying to get a squirrel. No, just sap. Okay, so I don't know how well this is showing up, but my backstops are about this high, and my 
clamp on the other side about right here. And that's I always try to do that to where my, my clamp is lower than my backstop so that my backstops, I can see those easily. I can't see my clamp very well without, you know, sticking my head over on the far side and then I'm not paying attention as closely as I should. But any, at any rate, I have it set up like this right now because this cant is taller than I have clearance on the saw head. So I'll cut down here and I can get down to about 6 inches where my next cut will get below 6 inches. And I'll stop there, clean off the top of this, and then reset my backstop and my clamp to cut all the way down. Now the other part of the reason I did this too is that if I put these backstops all the way down and just have my clamp on the other side down low, I don't have anything help holding this up. And that saw has enough energy to flip this cant over if it's not properly backstopped. Don't ask me how I learned that. Okay, and there we go. Bowser board feed in the kiln, all baffled out, ready for uh, ready for the drying cycle. This should take about seven days for this kiln to dry this down to 10% or below moisture content. I usually stop the uh, the cycle at 12% and let it sit for a little while, and then I do my sterilization cycle where I crank it up to 160, turn off the compressor, but it still seems to lose about two to three percent of uh, moisture content which is fine here on the Gulf Coast. Uh, my equilibrium moisture content in this local area is around 13 or 14 percent most of the year. It drops down to 12 something I think in January or February. But at any rate um, it's dry enough that if uh, the, the customer allows it to acclimate in his house it'll swell out and uh, it won't move on him. Uh, so stick with us, uh, hit that notification bell and subscribe because uh, here in a couple of weeks I'm going to show you all how I take this stuff and turn it into flooring. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and all that happy stuff and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.